welcome to the channel and thank you for clicking on the video. In the last couple of weeks I've been on a couple of rides uh, that were organized by other people for other causes, both I think very, very worthy causes. One was a memorial ride hosted by Wilkins Harley Davidson. The other one was a cancer research benefit ride hosted by Newport VFW. I do think these are very important to participate in and to support. Uh, this isn't really something that I do on a regular basis. Prior to these two rides, I'd only been on a handful, I'd say three or four really big rides. A big ride I'll call over a hundred bikes. And I found that for the most part I enjoyed playing the, uh, the trailing bike, the last bike in the train, the caboose is what I would call it, or the sweeper, the person who would stop and assist other riders if they had issues. Uh, in the past I had a 1984 BMW R100 RTP. I had two full toolkits on it, uh, both uh, English and metric. And I would go ahead and just assist anybody I could. I had lots of bolts and uh, nuts and washers and all sorts of things that we could uh, try and help somebody out if there was an issue. Um, over the years, I stopped caring so much uh, as far as school kids go and ended up focusing more on making sure I had all the metric tools that I needed uh, as well as things that I didn't bring before like first aid kits and uh, electric pumps and and things like that, patch kits, and things that I hadn't carried before. Although I probably should have because um, I had a flat tire once on the interstate and it was just a ginormous pain in the backside. To get a tow on a motorcycle, you have to have a specific uh, type of tow come and get you. You can't just call a regular tow truck. Uh, AAA doesn't cover it under their car plan. It's got to be a recreational plan, and then they've got to make sure they've got the right mo the, uh, motorcycle wrecker to come and get you. It was just a comedy of errors trying to get the thing sorted out. Finally did get it sorted out, but it was one of those things that I spent way more money than I should have, way more money than I had at the time. I was one of the, uh, I will say, barely scraping by working poor at the time, and so, you know, kicking out hundreds of dollars in order to just prepare a flat was just something that I should have been better prepared for, especially since I did have all those different tools. I just didn't have, you know, a patch kit. And it just seems ridiculous to me now. That's, that's how that went. But the thing that I'm bringing up those events for is I understand that's not usually the type of uh, writing that I do. I tend to write in small groups. Um, I... I really probably covered the most miles um, with another person in my life, uh, with my wife, and uh, I, I miss her this year. She's actually in Virginia helping our daughter with her first year away from home and taking care of some other things while she's down there. And so <clears throat> this year I've been by myself and uh, it's really quite an odd thing. I. I put down easily a half million miles on motorcycles, and I would say I easily did, um, you know, 80% of those, if not even a bit higher, uh, by myself. And it was a way that I I call it moto therapy, and it's definitely a way that I found I could allow the miles and the practice of motorcycling to bring my head really focused in on the present moment while having background processes running in my brain in order to figure the things out that I was working on, whether that's uh, you know my quality of life issues or whether that was a trouble I was having in a certain work environment or, or a personal issue that I might have been having at the time. Um, there was a, a period of time uh, the, that motorcycle, the R100 RTP, I purchased after being widowed. And so there was a lot of processing I had to do, and most of it I had done uh, on the road. A lot of the suggestions on how to handle things and how to approach things and how to think about things and reframe them uh, was done in a psychiatrist's office, but the actual hard work of going through 
and getting the things really into my head and processing them through and coming out with the result that I could live with that I felt comfortable with and that I felt answered the questions in my head that I was trying so hard to answer came to me by traveling thousands upon thousands of miles on on the roadways across the United States. And it wouldn't have been unheard of for me to take a a thousand mile day and break it up and say, hey, I'm gonna stop for lunch at the, uh, you know, 500 mile mark and then I'm gonna turn around. And I'm going to take the exact same route back because believe it or not, you get different views depending on which direction you're going. And it, it might sound totally disintuitive, but you can see the back side of the mountain. You couldn't see the going past the first time. You can see the, the the way the road comes to you is just a little bit different. I don't know how else to explain it. More often than not, people do loops. Uh, even now in the writing I do, I mostly do loops. But a loop that I'll go clockwise one time, the next time I'll go counterclockwise and see what else comes in my mind, what it comes in my field of vision to see what I can to see. And in the state that I live in now, Vermont, just named uh, the number one safest state in the United States. Uh, it wasn't for motorcycling, it was just overall. Uh, however, it's a great environment for the W800, uh, W650s, the Kawasaki W series, and those type of motorcycles. The parallel twins, the inline twins, Anything that's not engineered to go, uh, you know, Mach 5, stoplight to stoplight, and anything that's not, you know, um, a ground shaker, and anything that's not, you know, 700 pounds or heavier. Uh, it's in some of the twisties. We've got uh, a road here we call the Notch that goes through Stowe that large trucks get stuck in all the time. But not just that, there's some places where it's literally one car can get through at a go and so you have to stop and you might not be at the right pitch in the road and you might be leaned uh you know might might be a heavily crowned road it helps with the the melt and the snow removal if it's heavily crowned and you're on the the downside and all that weight is leaning one way you might end up with a tipped over bike but these sub 500 pound motorcycles that you know zoom along just fine at 50 miles an hour, uh, 35 miles an hour in town, sometimes 25, but 40 and 50 in most uh, two-lane highways. It's just a perfect combination to go uh, exploring. If you're not careful, you'll hit dirt roads, I can tell you that right now. And so in some instances, when I play my favorite game, where does that road go? I opt for the G650 GS because as soon as it turns to dirt, I just keep going because it may turn to a tarmac later and give me someplace else and I go, oh, now I know how to, where that goes, that dirt stretch goes, and it's a a shortcut or a long way or an alternate path to X. And so I'll I'll think about it that way and move forward this way. But uh, I would say you could ride for weeks and weeks and weeks straight uh, through Vermont and just use tarmac. And then you could get uh, an ADV bike and go weeks and weeks and weeks and just do um, unpaved roads. And you'd eventually see all the roads in the state, but uh, you know, it's, it's definitely one that just has great adventures all over the place and it's absolutely fabulous. So I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot to see in the brave little state of Vermont uh, on pavement and on uh, dirt roads, but W series, I I personally call it the show pony, and I would hate to mark it up with the gravel nicks and things like that from taking it on fire roads or camp roads and things like that. I do have to take it off on unpaved on unpaved roads uh, to and from my home. I live on a mountain, however. Uh, I've been real good at being real careful and just crawling down the mountain, crawling up the mountain so that I don't get any nicks and scratches and things like that on it. But I really have just absolutely enjoyed the the bliss of riding the W800 uh, through Vermont. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about today. So leave your comments below, let me know what you think, uh, tell me what your favorite roads in your state are or your in your province. Tell me uh, what types of roads are your favorite. Tell me 
what type of writing you like to do that's the favorite. Let's start the discussion down below and see. Mine is what I call tourist writing. It's those two lane um, highways that go through all the little small towns and see the Americana that still exists all over the place that you just don't get to see when you're on the interstate. Thank you very much for sticking this long in the video. Get the shiny side up, the rubber side down, and keep it wheeled.